a lot of discussion around Genesis 1 through 3 about the genre of these chapters. Uh, are these chapters a poetic account of the creation of, of heaven and earth? Are they some kind of ritualized account, a poetic, uh, psalm-like account, or are they actual history? Uh, and there are various ways to understand how that, uh, to answer that question or to answer that question. One of the ways is to look at the Hebrew grammar. And when you look at the Hebrew grammar of both accounts in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, uh, both of them are written in uh, normal uh, he uh, Hebraic narrative form. Uh, there are scholars who recognize and, and point out that the uh, uh, the Genesis 1 is a more exalted tone. It does have some certain poetic features. It's repetitive in a way that Genesis 2 is not. It has these refrains about the uh, at the end of each day about the Lord saying that everything is good, uh, evening and morning were uh, another day. It has these refrains, but the basic structure and the basic grammar of Genesis 1 is the same as the basic structure, grammar, the grammatical structure of Genesis 2, and that is that both are prose narratives. Both of them are presenting uh, events in the history of humanity, the initial events in the history of the world, God creating the heavens and the earth, and then uh, in Genesis 2, God uh, creating humanity. Even if we recognize that Genesis 1 has certain poetic features and it's written in a kind of exalted historical narrative, it's a kind of exalted prose, uh, that's not at all at odds with understanding it as a an account of how God actually made the world. Uh, there are poetic features in virtually every historical narrative account of the Bible. There are repetitions within uh, most narrative accounts in the Old Testament. Uh, there are uses of key words. There are poetic devices being used. So the fact that there are poetic devices in Genesis 1 doesn't, that's not at odds with understanding it as a historical account. Once you make the decision that poetry and history are contrasting modes of discourse, uh, then much of, the, much of the Old Testament starts to look like it's just poetry and mythology. Uh, Genesis 1 and 2 are written uh, in the same kind of prose that the Book of Kings or the Book of Chronicles or other historical books of the Bible are. And we should understand them as the beginning of God's work uh, with the world and with humanity. I'm Peter Lightheart, President of the Theopolis Institute. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, please leave your comments and questions. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to have you return and watch future videos.